Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. On this edition of the show, I'm speaking with knife maker Ron Steele Jr., now, you've heard Ron's name on the show a lot recently, as my honeymoon with his prime model fixed blade is still going strong. Ron's knives came onto my radar when Justin of Tier 1 Gear Reviews loaned me two versions of his, his flagship design, the Prime. That's this one, in both drop point and clip point. Now, I was immediately taken in by the profile, especially of this drop point, which is rare for me. And uh, not only that, but the grind and the beautiful handle, even the sheath outstanding Kydex sheath. With a graphic design background, Ron's repertoire of knife designs is expanding, and I keep seeing models pop up on his Instagram that feel like future imperatives, especially the new Kiridashi. So we're going to talk about all of that in just a second. But first, if you think uh, what we do here is valuable and you want to help support the show while enjoying interview extras, knife giveaways, stickers, early access to the show, and more, you can do so on Patreon. Quickest way to get there is to head over to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Uh, remember, that's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Ever start looking for your next knife purchase before your last purchase has even arrived? Then you're probably a knife junkie. We have Ron Steele on the show. Ron, welcome to the Knife Junkie podcast. How you doing? Good, good. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. So, you know, I said it all up front and people have been hearing me go on and on about this prime for several months now since I've gotten it. And uh, I love it. And and you're you're kind of a new force out there that, uh, like I said, I was turned on to by tier one. And mm -hmm. uh, I've been not only loving my own knife, but kind of watching your uh, your craft grow. How did you get into knife making? Um kind of by accident <laughs> um it was just kind of over the past um couple of years um i started doing some knife modding um um and um one thing led to another and I, there was like all these great modders modders out there so so i kind of wanted to do something a little bit more unique so i decided to try my hand at making a knife and one thing led to another and now here i am so knife modding, how did that, uh, how did you go about that? What kind of knives were you modding? I know you don't just pick out anything, right? Um, no, well, the first, I think the very first one I did was, uh, what was it? I had gotten one of those, those Kaiser mini sheepdogs. Okay. And um, so it was like a, a great little format and everything. And then I had seen people doing different stuff and, uh, and I'm the kind of person that when I see something, I kind of want to make it my own and have it give it a different, its own flavor that kind of reflects myself. And so I decided uh, to um, to go at it and do like an acid stone wash on it. And then um, and then I think my sister saw it and she's like, oh, can I have that? I was like, yeah, <laughs> sure, whatever, <laughs> take it. Um, but then, uh, but yeah, then I just started doing that and um, First, first it was just doing stuff for my family, just for fun, for gifts. And then, um, and I was posting them on Instagram and people were liking some of the stuff I was doing. So, um, so I made a couple others. I actually did, uh, I did a, what was that? A CJRB crag. Um, I did a couple of those, um, in fact, um, I have one here. Let me grab it real quick. Give me a second. Sure. Uh, go ahead. So uh, the thing that occurs to me is that if you're going to get into knife modding, uh, you have to love knives to begin with, you know. And, uh, you know, we've spoken to a number of people here who started as knife modders. Um, so what, what knives were you really in love with to begin with that led you to want to start modifying them? Um, you know, in, in fact, I did like a bunch of these and this is a, a CJRB crag. Mm. Um, and it us usually has a flipper tab, a big chunky flipper tab on it. So I deleted it, put in a, like a, 
put just a thumb hole and uh and did some dyeing to it and everything and um hmm. and did kind of like a like a faux like sand my deal going on to it to give it like a damascus look and everything so i did a few of those and um people liked them i did a few different mods for that but um it was fun but it it was just taking somebody else's work and trying to put flavor on it where going into doing, actually doing the knives was actually coming straight from me and do, being in, the, as far as the creative process, it's, it starts from the bottom up. Well, I would imagine that uh, while you're modifying knives, you're learning a lot about how knives are built, how they're put together, how they're designed, and what the materials, how the materials react to different mm -hmm. tools and processes. So, yes, I mean, you're definitely. you're learning a lot from the modifications. So, mm -hmm. how did you how did you know that it was time for you to fly the coop? How did you know that you were fledged and uh, <laughs> and you could start making your own knives? Um. Well, I just, I just started, um, I just started making them and, um, and I actually started on like a, a one by 30, um, little Harbor Freight grinder and, um, and I was just posting them online as I was doing the, uh, as I was making them and, and it was fun to see people's reactions and, and, um, and then also what ha was happening is that I can see my own growth as I was going along and and making these knives. I could see um, where I started from and how I would progress, and and it would keep getting um, keep progressing. And and people were asking for them, so like I started making some for a few people, and then and it just progressed from there. Uh, well, so how did your I would imagine that knife making and graphic design aren't that different. The difference, you know, are the materials and mm -hmm. and and the fact that you're producing a a real world tool as opposed to a abstract communication tool, you know, in graphic design. But mm -hmm. basically, you're doing the same thing. What? How did how did that feed? How did graphic design feed your knife making? Um, I think just more of as far as. Um, aesthetically um being able to find pr the right proportions that um um not only work well but look well together and um so just like thinking about how um how the lines f flow along the knife um how i want them to flow um you know, so those, and then also just like, like knife handle, the blade handle proportions and things like, things like that. Um, you know, you're kind of following like a set of, um, you're always following like a set of rules and then, then, and then trying to like, I think that's goes with most things. You follow a set of rules and then you put your own spin on it or you break the rules where you see fit. Right. So, yeah. Well, uh, so you you take them you you uh you do your graphic design you start working on these knives and uh so i understand how the aesthetic part translates over okay you're mm -hmm. you're just you're you're using your graphic design eye as you just mentioned and and then you know you're you're learning the process but how mm -hmm. do you learn about the materials steel itself you know you can you can draw something and adjust it and make it mm -hmm. look right in in however you're drawing it but with steel, yeah. it's somewhat unforgiving, right? You got to learn about heat treatment. All that. How did you learn about this kind of thing? I'm, it's just doing, just doing research um, online um, and some books, and you know, picking up like the was it the knife the um, knife steel nerds book? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, it, that's like everybody's handbook now, right? <laughs> so, um, but I mean, it's you just basically. I mean, I'm not trying to do anything crazy. Um, I'm just following, for me, it's like, I'm just following recipes that have been laid out before me and, um, just trying to follow these recipes the best I can, um, and to get the desired results that I want. And, um, but as far as, at, at least as far as the design aspect, um, it's, I do a lot of sketches. I've always, I've always been into drawing since um since a kid and um since like high school i was in art classes and 
and uh, and just design classes through college and stuff. So, um, you know, you're always putting things down on paper. And then with the mm -hmm. advent of like um, with computers and having like Illustrator and, and different programs to, at my disposal, I'm able to do a lot of things. So if it and then and have and be able to create like templates and then also take make derivatives off of that too. Do you use uh, Illustrator, for instance, a lot? I know that's a big one with uh, graphic designers. Yeah, that's that was. I mean, that's what makes it easy for me is that when um, when I get a drawing down that I really like, um, that I want to try and make re repeatable, I'll go into I'll, I'll scan it and then and then modify it in Illustrator and make sure I get all the lines just right. And then um, I can I could always change it up too, and um, and then every time I could just print out that same template, and and then I have my basis for for each knife. I know a lot of guys use a, like CAD programs, so this is basically using the same type of um, the, having like the same function. It's so like it's, it's handmade CAD because you're <laughs> you're printing these out right, and you put the template because I uh -huh. I remember seeing process pictures on your Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, you print out the paper, you put it on, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know, you sp maybe spray fix it onto it onto the piece of metal and then you're mm -hmm. cutting it out each one by hand. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Well, what's your process like from there? Um, from there it's, um, it's just working the steel. I mean, I'm, I'm cutting them out on, uh, with a bandsaw. Then I take it and I'll and, um, refine all the profile uh, on the grinder and then and flatten it out. And then um, take, right now I, I've switched to doing my heat treats before grinding my bevels, um, just so I can have uh, so I can have a flatter a flatter finished product in the end. Wait, wait, say that again. You so um, so um, depending on a lot of people decide will. Um, either grind grind their primary bevels before heat treat so um, it's easier is, to cut into basically. yeah so so you a lot of times you're not you're not wasting as much um you're not wasting your belts as much because um when you grind after you do your heat treat the steel's harder it eats up belts a lot quicker um so um but i find that it's it you get a better finished product. You don't have to waste as much time trying to flatten out um, if if you get any warps in the heat treating process. So um, it actually saves time in the end, and like you're always buying belts, so it's a it's a um, it's an expendable piece. You know, you're just gonna. Mm -hmm. Well, so okay, so if you heat heat treat before your main bevels are on, mm -hmm. and you have some sort of warp, you're saying it's easier to flatten out uh before the bevels are on there yeah i mean you have basically yeah because you have a flat you don't have any bevels so if you need to flatten out um you, it's a bit easier to flatten it between something when you're yeah you yeah know? Okay, it's so like because you have three square <laughs> surfaces all meeting up yeah, yeah yeah and then also um and, and then even after that, when you're um, when you're grinding off a lot bunch of the decarb off the the sides of the um, on the sides of the blade, um, it also helps to flatten it out even more. So, um, okay. I try to get the the cleanest surface possible before I grind my bevels. So, just in having this prime model, this double edge, and this was your first double edging of this mm -hmm. model. It's the uh, only one I've done so far. So. <laughs> I like that. That makes this even yeah. cooler. Uh, but, but um, you know, I, it's obvious from just feeling the main bevels here between my fingers and and the grind. I mean, it's in a, a very very sharp knife with a very even and and uh, small uh, you know main edge here and. So obviously you learned quickly or, or learned along the way uh, with that one by 30. But how, so how mm -hmm. did you, did you have to move up to a different, uh, to a, to a two by 72 and a better blade grinding grinder to get to this stage? Or how, how did your, um, how did you mature 
uh, with your tools? I think I think the the tools just make it cleaner and easier and faster. Um, it's and I mean with the the one by thirty, it's like this little underpowered little junky thing that's not square. So you're really trying to um, you, you really have to like work at it to to get it where you want. Um, and so, and, and me with me, I, I actually do jig grinding. I'm not like going to be all bones about it, but I, I use a jig to do all my grinds because, because I can do it repeatedly and have, and have a lot of consistency with it. So, um, and, um, and I can do all my designs by doing it that way. So, but with like the, the one by 30, it was so out of square and, and <laughs> so crazy that like, you really had to like finesse it to, uh, to get it, to get the lines where you wanted to. Um, and with the, with the two by, with the two by 70, it's a, it's, you have a lot more surface to work with. So it makes it much easier and makes it go a lot faster. I mean, I just said, I, it would take me like on a one by 30, I'd be grinding um, the primary bevels over a, like over the course of a, a day. And, <laughs> and now like, um, I'll, I mean, I usually, I take my, I still take my time on it. And, um, but I'm, I mean, I could, I could at least get at least one and a half knife, like grind it out primaries and finished, finished grinding um, in a day. So it's it really it is up the process a lot and and um making everything a lot cleaner too so, so well it's i mean when you think about it well first of all it's a finer machine you're you're spending mm -hmm. a lot more money on that machine and mm -hmm. and uh on a two by 72 people you know the makers go to great lengths to make everything squared and you know mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a great machine to begin with but you also yeah. have so much more surface area and mm -hmm. you also have control over your speeds right yeah yeah and that's another thing is uh speed and power um there's so much more power you could put so much more work into it um and um and then the speed also um being it and i think it's not the the top end of the speed it's the low end of the speed that that makes right. a big huge difference for me is being able to slow everything down um so i can um get my lines as clean as possible and it's, yeah. I'm still learning. It's still, it's still, uh, it's a practice. It's definitely a practice. Um, you know, every time you learn something new and, um, you mess up all the time and you have to, and you adjust, right? So like a medical practice, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> always messing up. No, just yeah. kidding that. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, so, um, it seems like you might have a pile of, unusable steel that's sacrificial just to sort of learn that mm -hmm. process especially um, right do you have like a uh, there's there's some junkers man i have some it's the you know it's the pile of shame it's just that you just toss it it's just <laughs> like yeah there it is you know break them do stuff with them you know um it happens and and uh but yeah, it's a learning process. So, and it's always a learning process. If you if you stop learning, you're not growing. So, uh, so just uh, just so I'm clear, because at some point I want to get a, a real grinder. I have a mm -hmm. two by forty two. I think it is two by forty two. It's been a long time since I've used it. But mm -hmm. on on the uh, on the two by seventy two, uh, when it's slower, it seems like you know when you can control your motor and get it down to a slower speed is it true that you can get more precise like uh you know these perfect straight lines you have these grind lines you can get those more precisely at a slower speed um i think yes and no i mean um you definitely i think you're i think at the slower speeds you're less likely to take a huge chunk out of your steel so um in the mm -hmm. regards yeah so mm -hmm. it's like um if you slip up it's less likely to put a huge gouge into your work that you've already put into it. Right. All right. So before we move to the handle, cause I want to talk about your handles. I just have to mm -hmm. comment that you you've got some of the best jimping in the game, sir. I love your <laughs> jimping. It is, That's it's great. that sort of larger 
scooped mm -hmm. out jimping, but it's mm -hmm. it's got the perfect combination of sharpness and grippiness, but it mm -hmm. doesn't shred your thumb or it doesn't feel like it would hurt with uh, hours of work on it, you know? Yeah, yeah, you know, I was, I mean, I know that it's it looks fairly aggressive and that's um, one of the things that I thought about and I worked with on it and is just thinking about how, um, how I did like that aggressive jimping look, but I don't necessarily like that um, that really digging feel to mm -hmm. it. Um, so I did like, um, so one of the things I do on the jimping is um, I actually bevel all the, all the edges on the, on the jimps. So there's a slightly, I don't know if you can see it, like on, on these, all, so just a little mm -hmm. bit, I like to, put a, a little bit of bevels on each one of them. So they look deep. Yeah, I can see that. They, they're actually a little bit rounded off. So. so since you have that in your hand, show that off. Mm -hmm. That's the clip point version of the prime. This is the original prime blade shape. And then look at this beautiful thing. Yeah, this was a fun one to put together. It almost hurt my heart to order to not to order the Bowie, but I was so <laughs> I was so impressed with how yeah. taken I was with this drop point. Usually, drop points to me are like, eh, okay, it's a drop point. But this yeah. I, something about your your prime drop point design is incredibly, uh, you know, it just does it for me. Mm -hmm. That's why I got this first. And I at some at some point I will be getting that clip point because um, yeah, I, I love the shape you came up with. Mm -hmm. I mean. Clip points have been done a trillion times, but I love yeah. your clip point shape. Yeah, thanks. So you mentioned that it was really fun to put the handle together on that one. And um, mm -hmm. uh, here, let me let me just quickly before I ask you about your handle process, explain uh, about this handle. This is dark, beautiful dark maroon uh, uh, linen micarta, and then it's split up with uh, black and gray spacers, G10 spacers. So. Uh, it was time for my knife to be made and Ron called me. What do you want on your handle? I said, I want, I want uh maroon my card. And he says, can I do, you know, is that it? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's what I want. And he's like, can I do something? And I'm like, sure, do something. And so he, he spiced it up with those uh, different segments and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I know you were really holding your, holding yourself back because your handles are a huge mm -hmm. part of what you do. Uh, tell me about this joy of making handles. Um, it's, you know, I, it's a complete, um, it completes the whole, the identity of each knife. Um, I work with each person that orders one of my knives with, um, with the handle materials that they want, um, what, a, what they, what they're, um, looking for. And, um, and so we, and we'll go over it and we'll talk about um, if they want a specific material like the um, like if they want fat carbon or if they want micarta um, and then also they talk about like what colors they're um, what colors they would want and then and from there um, a lot of times what I'll do is uh, I like to do um, Photoshop mock-ups of of one of the knives with the materials that they're requesting. So it's like, um, so there's like some, if it, they wanted like uh, some, uh, what is it, some like the Mexican Blake and Gicarda on it or, or something like that, but with mixed with some black micarta and I'll go through some, I'll do like, you know, three or four different iterations of it and and they could decide or they can um, talk about, well, I was thinking more something like this and then I'll try to reproduce it for them. And then and when we get a finalized design, I'll put it together for them. Nice. Yeah. All right, so let me um, let me show you the other knives I have on loan to me. So the guy who introduced me to you, uh, Justin from Tier One, he sent me two uh, primes originally with really cool handles. Uh, one was a drop point, one was a clip point that had complementary handles. And uh, then he sent me these to check out. Uh, these are two of your short round models with fat mm -hmm. carbon and beads, which I think you make, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, these things are really cool. I mean, these handles are are, are exquisite. and uh, But I really like this design, this sub hilt design. 
Um, mm -hmm. And not only that, but also how you make the sheath for it, that you can you can have a full grip with your finger engaged on that sub hilt and mm -hmm. draw it and have your hand perfectly uh, ready to go with this knife. Tell me about the, the short round. Is this a big one in your catalog? Well, um, the short round was probably the first, um, the short round sheep's foot was definitely the first knife I actually introduced. Um, okay. And, um, and it, there was the first iterations with it is the, I didn't make the handles very good. <laughs> so they were kind of like, <laughs> they were pretty small, but people really liked them. I actually have another one right here that I've just finished with the, Ooh. with the, Fat carb on it, fat carbon on it with G10 and a like a octagonal bead. So, okay, wait, wait. Before we continue talking about uh, the the short round, let's look at that handle. Put that handle back up. Yeah. Yeah. So that looks like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six layers across. Is that the fat carbon? A piece of a liner. Yes. That's two, three. Yeah. That's a piece of G10. Four, five, six, seven pieces. Yeah, I think so. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think uh, about there's one, two, there's three pieces, three, four pieces, and one, two, three, four, I think five liners in it. Jeez. Okay. Yeah. So these handles for these, fun. for these little EDC knives that are, uh -huh. I mean, they're beautiful and that's what they are. They're little EDC yeah. knives. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, you go to great lengths uh, with these handles. It seems to be a, a, a part of the process that brings you joy. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. Definitely. It's, um, it's, I think it's part of the, I mean, I just, I think it just adds to flavor to it. And, um, and it helps like individualize each individual piece. Um, I, I like the fact that um, aside from making an all black knife, um, like almost every single piece that I put out has been been and unique. Hmm. So. so as a creative person, you know, you, you before you ever got into knife making, you had graphic design and mm -hmm. who knows what else. Uh, I mean, you could tell us what else, but uh, but I wonder, um, uh, does the graphic design, like I like to look at the knife maker as a whole being. <laughs> and, and in this case, it's like, it's could knife making, especially like just looking at this handle construction, which is so complex, uh, but, uh, but gratifying and how many different materials and colors it brings into it. Could mm -hmm. this whole process completely uh, uh obscure and supplant or usurp or whatever graphic design and make it seem like graphic design is now unnecessary because you're basically doing the same thing except bringing a tool into the world well um honestly this is pretty much all i do right now uh, aside from being a full-time dad so um, right on yeah so i'm i'm a full-time dad and a part-time knife maker so yeah, that's basically all I do these days. Um, it's it's been great. I mean, um, just the the welcoming of the community and everything. Um, um, a lot of people that have followed me since the beginning have seen my growth and always encouraged me and and um, and other knife makers out there. Um, you know, it's, it's been it's been awesome. So, I, I feel like if you if you show up to the knife world with great knives, good construction, good design, and you mm -hmm. know beautiful looking knives, and then you communicate properly with your with with your customers, which you do for sure, mm -hmm. um, uh, I think I think it can be a very welcoming place. I'm not mm -hmm. surprised you were you were embraced. I mean, because your work is just really it's it's beautiful. So what about being a full-time father? I'm a father and, uh, and I know it's not easy. And, uh, you know, my wife and I share, share a lot of the responsibility. Of course, my wife, uh, I don't know, but she does more of the planning. I do a lot of the executing, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm right there with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. But it's not easy no matter where you land on it. So how, how is that, uh, how does knife making and full-time fatherdom uh, 
how does that come together? Do they complement one another? Um, I think one of the good things is that um, I do all my work at home, so mm -hmm. I'm here all the time. Um, so when they're here, I'm here, and um, and um, a lot of times they can be playing around in the backyard while I'm working, and um, with that, they're they're now. My son's in preschool, so I do have some of that time to myself, and my daughter is um, a second grader, so so I do have a little bit of free time to like actually be just have a full time focused on what I'm doing. And, and do, then, do they do they love? I'm sorry, I cut you off again. Do <laughs> they do they love what you do? Do they like knives? Is that something that's interesting? They they do. My daughter is really. Um, my daughter was really in, is really interested in it. Um, she actually, if there's there's actually a knife, if you go to my page, um, there's a knife that she actually designed and I made, oh, and it's wow. like um, it's like this little, it's like a small tanto, um, but it's very like a, it's very a, like a, what do you call it? It's it's like a miniature katana, basically. And she drew this out. She drew like this thing, this out. I'm like, oh, oh, that's cool. I'm like, and I and I posted the picture. I'm like, oh, my sister drew this. She's like, really, she wants. She designed a knife. And then someone's like, oh, you should make that for. You should make that. You should make that real. I was like, all right, let's let's try. Let's go at it. And and. And so I did, and I have actually have it, and I actually made uh, a scabbard for it and everything. So like it has a little, it's um, with JG10, and uh, mm. it, so it has like a a little a JG10 um, saya for it. So wow, yeah, nice. It's, yeah, it's really cool. It's really cool. And um, people ask about it, and like, oh, can you make one of those for me? I was just like, uh, I go, I I'd have to refine it and. Um, and make it a a little bit more usable than it is, but um, but it is a really cool design nonetheless. You'd have to pay your daughter royalties too. Yeah, you might want to avoid that. <laughs> <laughs> so you have the ability to just take a drawing, obviously mm -hmm. your own or someone else's, your daughter's in this case, and mm -hmm. turn it into a knife. How did you actually learn that skill? To, to make a knife and to make a scabbard. Did you have a mentor? Was it YouTube University? No. How, how did this happen? It, it was definitely YouTube University. Um, just, yeah, just going on and watching, um, watching YouTube videos. And then, and then I think uh, it's like, you get a good basis of what to do, but you really don't know what to do until you start doing it. It's like, um, that's where all the mistakes happen and where you actually learn. So it's, it's like you have an idea, you can learn tricks and, and, um, and, and the, you, you can know how to do it, but you don't really know how to do it until you actually get your hands dirty. Yeah, that's for sure. And probably make a bunch of mistakes. And mm -hmm. then, and, and then also I would imagine build some muscle memory, like any other exercise, yeah. any other physical activity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And so, then when you mess up, you're throwing knives across the yard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you work outside or do you have an, in, do you have your own shop inside? I, or? I actually have, my shop is actually in my backyard. I have a covered area that, um, that all my shop equipment is, and it's been accumulating for the past mm -hmm. uh, year and a half, two years now and uh it's like uh, my wife's like oh it's your backyard now it's your backyard <laughs> it's like there's some small area for the kids but we have another whole yard that um that my kids get to play in and stuff so. like baby it was always my backyard now you're <laughs> recognizing <laughs> right and she's like um, oh you got she's got the whole house <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's next Look at the backyard <laughs> <laughs> right i got you so, excuse me, who are the knife makers, <coughs> excuse me, who are the knife makers, um, you know, because again, like I said before, you don't just start modding knives if you're not really into knives and mm -hmm. you don't start just making knives if you're not really into knives. Who are the knife makers that you maybe have collected in the past, collect now, really admire, 
keep your eye on on Instagram, all that? Well, um, you know, some of the the knife makers that I follow on Instagram are like uh, are like Brian Brown and um, what's that Matt Ware from Ware Knives. Oh and, yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, I mean, I do follow a, a lot of a lot of guys, and I mean, there's so many of them, um, but um, those are some really big standouts to me. Um, that and I even contacted Matt a couple of times, picking his brain about certain things, and and he's very welcoming and and very helpful. So it's 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 awesome. Like if these guys, uh, the these guys are like um, very reachable, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, do you feel as a fixed blade knife maker? This is something I've I've uh, um, like seen other people uh maybe feel or express to me um but like this this inevitable reach towards making folders is this something you feel um or are you just making your knives and that's what you like how does that work well um i think eventually i'm going um i want to make a folder it's it, it, I feel like it's that's that's the inevitable is ultimately making uh, uh, some type of folder, and I know that's that's just like a whole other animal and a lot of, so much precision into it. And um, but um, I th I see it as you know, as a challenge, you know, um, like each one of the each everything is a challenge. Um, um, I've always I'm. For, for, for the majority of my life, I haven't been really much of a challenge taker, but like with th doing the knives and everything, people always come in, oh, can you do something like this? And I'm like, hmm. And then the next thing I know, I'm like making drawings and everything, and I'm starting to send them things. And, and Case like, in point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? And I'm just like, oh, yeah. I, I'm like, oh, you know what? It's like, oh, let me try. Let me try it. if, you know, um, I'll try it. If, if I can't do it, then I can't do it. Um, but I'm not going to settle for, I'm not going to settle for not, not even trying. That's, so. I, I think that's a big part of the artistic spirit is that, mm -hmm. you know, if you, you might not be a daredevil in your regular everyday life, but when it comes to creative challenges mm -hmm. and, and, and problem solving, you know, I have a, I have a, you know, my job, it has a hugely creative element to it. And there are um, plenty of times where I'm kind of like, ah, oh, <laughs> I have to do that thing. And then, mm -hmm. and then I have to give myself a little talking to it. I'm like, mm -hmm. I can, I can do this and I can do it better than it's been done before. Mm -hmm. If I, if I approach it in such a way. And I think it's that um, it's, it, you know, uh, with creative people, you need to throw an extra layer in there of something, mm -hmm. you know, it's a video problem or it's a knife problem or it's a design mm -hmm. problem. And then, and then you're excited to take it. Uh, mm -hmm. If it's a tax problem, you're like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, um, there's certain things like when I was doing more graphic design, it, it sometimes you would get to a point where it's, um, it, you you spend a lot i did a, i spent a lot of time um doing um doing powerpoints and oh. and it's you know it's it's a lot of just cl a lot of cleanup work and just making sure that everything is presentable in a in a fashion and doing this is it's is much more creative um um i mean doing I, I i mean i've done some logo design and i've done some uh and i've done some uh just uh t-shirt designs and stuff like that that tends to be a, a lot more um fulfilling but not nearly as much as this this is like because it's, it was always doing something um creating something that was specifically for them mm -hmm. that was all them all what they wanted and what they wanted to see i'm just using my creative process to give them what their idea is and where this this is this is this is all me this is like 
I came up with this design. I came up with this knife design, and um, I'll, I'm, I'll I like working with people to come up with um, to come up with their with with their finishing options. Like, um, um, but it's but it makes me feel good that it's like that they're interested in something that I have made that came from my creative processes. You know. Yeah. And what you're creating is, uh, is a useful tool. It's the first mm -hmm. tool and it will last generations beyond the life that commissioned it from you. I mean, that's another mm -hmm. cool thing to think of, you mm -hmm. know, by the, this is micarta uh, glued on and, and bolted on to steel, you know, with epoxy yeah. and everything. And like, this is going to last way longer than my, uh, you know, my bag of flesh and bones here, you know, not to be, <laughs> not to be morbid, but yeah, it'll, yeah. Uh, it, and it's, that's something that I, uh, you know, it, uh, I went to art school and I, I created a lot of things that I enjoyed and loved, but mm -hmm. there was also this knowledge. This is on paper. This is on canvas. This will rot in a hundred years or mm -hmm. no one cares about this drawing, but someone, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. You don't have to be into knives. You can pick this up and recognize the value in it. Mm -hmm. And then, and mm -hmm. then if you have any sort of eye for beauty or anything else, look deeper and see that it's a, an exquisitely made knife. But the point mm -hmm. is it's something that can work and do a function yeah. beyond art. Yeah, definitely. definitely. So now you're not just an artist. Now you're in the business of knives. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I know you said the knife world has been very accepting and, and that kind of thing, but how do you find the actual business end of doing all this? Um, for me, it's, you know, it was, it's, it's interesting. It's still mostly a hobby for me. Um, I haven't really delved completely into it. Um, but one of the things that happened was that when I, when I started doing this and, um, my wife, my wife knows me well, she said, um, she knows that like, I, I'll pick up something and, um, uh, like in my in my time of doing graphic design, I was like, Oh, I'll, I'm going to start doing, uh, doing my own printing and t-shirt printing. Got to bought a bunch of stuff, started doing a little bit. And then just like, it just started to sit in the garage. And so, so she didn't want to want me to be fronting a bunch of money in order to, to go on another endeavor that she doesn't know what's going to happen. Right. And she said, and she told me straight out is, um, you, if you're going to do this, you have to make it self-sufficient, right? And you're going to, um, it's like, uh, because I'm not going to, I'm not going to put money into this. So, um, I was, I've been fortunate enough that people have been enjoying my stuff and every, every knife that I have ever sold has gone directly back in to, um, my knife making practice. Um, so like as of right now, um, everybody's just paid for machinery in my shop <laughs> and, and materials and, um, you know, so, and, and eventually, eventually, um, especially when the kids go back, go to school full time and everything, I think I'll be able to put more effort in this and, and I'll hopefully make it be, um, be lucrative. Uh, I mean, she gave you the, the ultimate motivator really. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, uh, and that's the perfect way to be supportive. If you ask mm -hmm. me, it's like, it's like, cause you could, you could, you could be a pushover and be like, whatever you, you know, mm -hmm. you know cause if it brings your bliss, you know? Yeah. yeah. But yeah. you gotta be realistic too. And, 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 and I know, um, being a creative person from a creative family, um, you know, uh, uh excitement about creative endeavors can be intense up front mm -hmm. and you can really throw yourself into it and then realize, mm -hmm. ah, you know, maybe it wasn't what I, and yeah. that happens, that happens. Mm -hmm. But when you find that thing, it's mm -hmm. like, I wasn't crying wolf before, but this is just the actual thing. And then yeah. it, it's yeah. all about showing that it's the thing. And obviously by this point you have, you know, with these beautiful knives and you have mm -hmm. a following of people and people who love your, you know, love your work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm really, I'm truly grateful. Um, like I said, everybody has been so supportive and, and, um, it's, 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 it's actually amazes me that, uh, that, um, people have been so supportive and receptive to the work that I've been doing. 
So I got to be uh, honest. I think both of these models in front of me, uh, the the short round and the prime, these are knives you could shop to Fox Knives. For, uh, for some reason, Fox Knives pops up. I don't know if it's the crown spine, but uh, excuse me. I know that they do some really great um, collaboration knives with really great and mm -hmm. and not huge hugely known knife makers. Mm -hmm. You know, like. Yeah. For instance, Black Rock Designs, you know, uh, yeah. Black Rock Knives, the two out of the park knives this past year. And a lot of people hadn't heard of him until mm -hmm. this point, but he's got great craftsmanship like mm -hmm. yourself and great design like yourself. And, um, you know, it seems like who knows, maybe have you thought about collaborations with production companies? Um, you know, it's a it's a thought. And I think that it i I wouldn't say no to the idea, um, but I, um, I just right now I'm just focusing on what I'm doing um, mm -hmm. and um, and getting myself out there and trying to try to keep it uh, something sustainable. And I, I don't like I don't like the idea of um, growing up too fast, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. um, it, and it's like right now. For me, I only take maybe like um, 10, 10, 12 orders over the course of like, over the course of like two months. Um, just, just because if I don't want to have like a huge overhead and, and be stressed about trying to make it up. Yeah. Yeah. Be um, in a hole. Yeah. Yeah. And it also still gives me time to um, work on my own creative processes too, to, um, to dabble in in different stuff and um, and to work on different prototypes uh, for for new designs. So, so they'll they'll I'm sure they'll come knocking on their own. Well, speaking of new designs, you've had two recently that mm -hmm. have really uh, uh, turned my head. One of them was a sax you were making a bunch. Uh, I don't know, maybe a month ago, month and a half ago. Uh, a, a sax shaped blade or, or worn cliff that was a little bit bigger than you know probably about the size of the prime yeah i do have yeah it's like i don't it's a worn cliff uh i call it the flank and it's a um it's kind of a it's it's a i don't know you can call it a worn cliff or a reverse tonto but it's it has a completely straight edge on it and and I've actually had that one for a while, and it's really, I mean, I actually love that that design. It's one of my favorites. It's just so slicey, and it just cuts through everything so, like, so nice. And um, and then um, I do have a, a Tonto that I have, and most recently, uh, more of a Kuridashi style yes. knife. Yes, I love it. Do you have one of those in front of you? I actually, I do. This is like the, actually the prototype that I have. Um, Let's see it in the sheath before you pull so, it out. So, so it's just, there. Nice. Uh, I like I like how the the pommel uh, sits proud of the handle scales. You've got that cool bead. All right, let's see it. So, and this one is actually. Uh. This one is actually, I started doing the ceramic coatings on certain knives. Mm, mm, mm. So, and this one's actually, this one's actually chisel ground. So yeah. it's completely flat. And is that the uh, Cerberus knives who did, did the coating? Um, no, I did talk to him, but mm -hmm. unfortunately he wasn't taking any, uh, any new people. He's only he's, he's because he does the nice ceramic. He loves his ceramic coating. It's yeah. amazing, and gorgeous. Um, and I did I did want to do that, but instead I went to the um, to be able to do it myself. I did a I'm just like a Cerakote coating on it. Oh, okay. Because so. you did a collaboration right with Jake B and uh, mm -hmm. and Cerberus. Yeah. Um, so I got to say that I think that Kiridashi is absolutely stunning. Uh, I love the Kiridashi format you know mm -hmm. and i've mm -hmm. seen people do a lot of really creative things but uh the the always the most beautiful to me and probably most useful is that mm -hmm. simple the way you did it just that, mm -hmm. that simple shape is it's 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 very beautiful yeah so, do you have a, wait, i'm sorry what oh i was just gonna say this is um 
because I did, I have done a, I did a, uh, I did a couple of, um, actually just in, ended up from tier one, picked mm-hmm. those up. I had a couple of Kiridashis that I did and they were, um, they were a lot smaller, more traditional style. Mm-hmm. And, but I had somebody, uh, contact me about doing something like that. And as one of those things, it's like, Oh, challenge accepted. <laughs> right. It's, it's like, it's like, Oh, I like that. But, um, but maybe something a little bit like bigger. And, um, so I went through a couple of iterations until I found something that I liked that was based off that design. And this is what I came up with. And I actually, this is the smaller of the two. This is like a two and a half, a two and a half inch cutting edge on it. And I actually have one that has a three inch cutting edge on it. Mm. So um, I also like wanted to be able for, I'm all about like having different options. So like, this is a really, this one has a really high chisel grind to it and it really thins out at the tip. So it's really like, it's really pokey. It's like a really thin tip on it. Um, but um, if anybody wanted something with, I can do a more traditional chisel grind on it. Or um, I also had the idea of actually being able to do a V grind on it too. So, so I did want to like, I like having those options and, and different, uh, um, different variables to each knife. Like, like you like the prime that has a clip point and yeah. and a drop point and i actually do a longer sheets version of that too so. yeah i think i think it's a good idea because you know everyone's got their little spin they want to put on it mm-hmm. uh with the kiridashi traditionally it's chisel ground i think mm-hmm. and chisel is just i love a chisel ground blade it gets so yeah. you know insanely sharp but some people just have an aversion to them uh, I think some people think that chisel ground knives look unfinished, you know, like mm-hmm. he wasn't mm-hmm. skillful enough, enough to do the other side. So, <laughs> you know, but, yeah. uh, so yeah, I think to offer someone that, you know, mm-hmm. uh, is a, is a nice option, but uh, yeah, I'm all for the, the traditional Kiridashi. Do you have any knives? Um, like what's the knife that you want to make or that you know, you hope you make say in the next five years, some oh. big challenge that, you know, your, your white whale. Oh, um, in the next five, within the next five years, I definitely want to look towards trying to do that folder. Um, that's definitely on, on the list. Um, you know, it's in, but it's a lot about like accumulating the machinery and then learning how to use the machinery. And, um, so there's a big learning curve for that. Um, but that's, that's definitely something I want to do. But I, I have some other things that I had planned out before then. Well, what, uh, what would that folder be like? <laughs> you know, I have, um, um, I had an idea of, um, basing it off of my, one of my, my Chuck model, which is a just small EDC cleaver. Oh yeah, um, yeah. But I'm I'm not like um I haven't really nailed it down yet. There's I still have a lot of like research to do and I still have a lot of ideation to come up with. Um but um but it I mean um I'm still in, you know, developing kind of um I'm still young in the game, so um uh my I guess my design style, I don't, I don't know how I would incorporate my personal flavor into a a folder, especially with like, with how saturated the market is with such great folders, you know, it's, it's such a great time to be, to be a knife designer and have um, with so many, and a knife collector. It is a great time to be a knife collector. And I'm glad, glad, I'm glad that there are people like you because I love fixed blade knives. Mm -hmm. I love fixed blade EDC knives. I carry them Mm -hmm. frequently. And uh, now that the weather is getting, uh, you know, now that it's getting cooler here where I live, I'm going to be carrying them even more. Uh, cause mm-hmm. I can put a sweater over or whatever. Cause, um, <laughs> but you know, I'm not that, 
uh, you know, I got to be somewhat careful about where I am, even though it's yeah. legal to walk around. It's not mm -hmm. socially acceptable. But anyway, like I said, I'm, I'm glad that there are people like you who are making these really um, I mean, they're luxury items, but they mm -hmm. they work beautifully. I mean, your knives yeah. are, are stout hearted as they come, but they're still beautiful and they're created with a lot of care. And yeah, so to me as a knife collector, that's what makes and they're handmade. That's what makes this a great market that I can get in here. So tell people uh, who are listening how they can get in touch with you. Where's the best place to follow you, how they can find out how to buy a knife and all of that. So the best place to get uh, in touch with me is on Instagram. I do everything through Instagram right now. Um, I am working on getting uh, a website going, um, but I'm not like, I'll try to get it out too quick. So don't worry about that. But just look for me at Ron Steel Design on Instagram. Just as simple. Great. Well, Ron, thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate your your style of knife making, your knives, your beautiful handles and sheaths and, and all the rest. It's been a pleasure talking with you. And uh, I, I look forward to, well, getting on your future books. You know, I have a lot of knives I have to get. So many knives, so little time and money. But uh, I, I will be back for my clip point version of this knife. And yes, I will ask for it double edged. So, <laughs> so if you want to challenge, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's been my pleasure. Take care, sir. You too. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. There he goes, knife maker Ron Steele Jr. Uh, you can find him on Instagram under Ron Steele Designs for knives like this, Prime, and this um, awesome knife. I, I, uh, you will you will love it. Check it out. And uh, you know, it's always great to get in on a knife maker during their ascension. You can get some some knives that will cost you a lot more in the future, no doubt. Uh, but in any case, it was a pleasure meeting him, and I love his brand of knives. Uh, check out uh, this Wednesday for the Midweek Supplemental, where I go through new knives in my collection, new knives out there in the world, and then some sort of quirky uh, sort of uh, category that I run through and really examine and break down. Also, there's Thursday Night Knives, our live stream at 10 p.m. every Thursday night, and uh, make sure you tune in for for the uh, Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway. All right, for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I am Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.